The Sonic the Hedgehog movies so far have been a massive success. To think, if it wasn't for... <sighs> this ugly beast. Ugh, it's hideous! And most importantly, the fan outcry over the design. Then we wouldn't have gotten a sequel or a third film. The films have been a massive success, they've made plenty of money at the box office, and have been reviewed well by critics and audience members. In fact, Sonic Movie 2 has already ranked as one of the highest grossing video game movies of 2022. So, what's next? Well now, just before the second film came out, Sega revealed that a third film was in the works, as well as a spin-off of the character of Knuckles which would be set after Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and right before the events of Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Details about the show have been... well... been interesting, but luckily we've got some more information such as plot and some characters. So I was also thinking, what could they do with the story of a Knuckles show? So let's dive into this video as I thought of a pretty good idea of a synopsis for the Knuckles show. Let's dive in shall we, to my idea for the Knuckles show. First up, The official plot says that the series follows Knuckles the Echidna as he trains Deputy Sheriff Wade Whipple in the ways of the Echidna Warrior. When I first heard this, honestly, I was a little disappointed, but maybe perhaps this could work. Perhaps we could have it that in episode 1, it starts out with a cool awesome action scene, let's say a bank robbery. And Sonic, Tails and Knuckles are on the scene, obviously fighting back the criminals and saving the day. We would return home to see Tom and Maddie, and here we would see the family have dinner and bond. Mostly through laughing and just cheering and, well, just telling stories about their day. The normal sort of family thing. Sonic would tell how he was able to go really quick and obviously says something pop culture related. Tails mentions about a gizmo that he's been working on or a gadget. And Knuckles is, well, quiet throughout the entire dinner. And, well, Maddie notices this. After dinner, Maddie talks to Tom, mostly about how he's been bonding with Sonic and Tails a lot. And, well, they haven't spent much time with Knuckles. Tom then brings up the idea of him taking Sonic and Tails out on a trip. While at home, Maddie would spend time with Knuckles. The two agreed to the idea, and, well, the next day... Tom, Sonic and Tails say their goodbyes, leaving Maddie and Knuckles. We would then see a montage of them doing some fun stuff, like getting ice cream and even playing some board games. However, Maddie would get a notification from work about a trip to a veterinary convention in London. So she asks Wade to take care of Knuckles for a few days. Wade agrees to this idea, however before he asks about Knuckles and that is he back to get him, which is obviously a reference to the joke in Sonic 2. <laughs> I don't know, I thought that would be a nice little inclusion. Well anyway, later on Maddie drops off Knuckles at Wade's. Later that night, on the far side of the town, at the Crash Death Egg robot, which is under control by Gun, a ring portal suddenly opens up nearby, and out of the portal pops Rouge the Bat. As she looks around, she pulls out her scanner and begins to scan the area for energy readings. However, she picks up a massive energy reading that ends up 
blowing up her device. She then suspects that it might be over at the town which is glowing in the background. And as she follows it, she doesn't know that a small egg drone is watching her, following her every move as she leaves. Back with Knuckles, he would be guarding the Master Emerald and training. Wade would ask him, how did he do that? To which Knuckles says that time is the key to greatness. Wade would then immediately make some joke and then would do some fake poses to try and impress Knuckles, who is just confused at why he's doing all these weird poses. However, conflict rises when Rouge the Bat enters and tries to steal the Master Emerald. Knuckles manages to fight her off, and Wade tries to help, but he ends up getting caught up and falling over. While Rouge may have failed, she did escape. Wade asks Knuckles if he knows her, to which Knuckles replies no, before immediately coming to the suspicion that the Master Emerald is no longer safe in Green Hills. At the end of the episode, it would show an annoyed Rouge trying to rob a jewellery store titled Pretty Super Emeralds. Just before she can get the chance to, she gets ambushed by egg drones, buzz bombers, and finally a new badnik, the Motobug. But anyway, Rouge begins to fight the drones, however the badniks overwhelm her. Before she can attack one of the drones, it hands out a tablet. Rouge looks confused at it, but picks it up and turns it on. A hologram of a hooded figure can be seen. The hooded figure, who refers to itself as Mr. Latte, says he's been watching Rouge for a while, and he and her share the same goal, the Emerald. Rouge tells him that she was drawn to Earth thanks to its mysterious power source. Mr. Latte then mentions how he's encountered the space porcupine three months ago, and offers a deal to Rouge. If she can get the Master Emerald for Mr. Latte, then he'll reward Rouge with all the gems in the world. Upon hearing this, Rouge agrees to this idea. After that, Mr. Latte then tells Rouge that he will be supplying her with badniks to offer support in the battle against Knuckles and Wade. He then gives Rouge a Robotnik control glove and tells her it can help her control the badniks and even scan anything. Episode 1 would end with Mr. Latte telling Rouge to get moving, since time is of the essence. From there, there would be many references to the franchise throughout the episodes. For example, Knuckles would be wearing his OVA hat in some episodes. One idea I also came up with was having Mr. Latte send out a Mega Badnik to deal with Knuckles and Wade, which would be E123 Omega, who would work with Rouge to get the Master Emerald. However, Omega would slowly transform thanks to Rouge's personality and would develop something of a personality of his own, where he would ultimately feel hated, hatred for his creator, for storing him away for so long and basically letting him collect dust. Okay. Now I think it's time we talk about the characters of the show, as they're one of the most important parts. So. I'm only going to do a few characters, but here's what I got. Starting off with the main boy himself, Knuckles. He would be the same as he was in Sonic 2, but he would kind of also be a bit more kinder this time around, and also he would tell stories of his Echidna clan to Wade. He would tell them how they took on monsters like Perfect Chaos, the Zeti, and then well, all sorts, but Knuckles' arc is him learning to lighten up, and to just be a kid. As for Wade, he would still be him same old self, not very intelligent, but kind-hearted, and he would provide a lot of jokes for the series, thanks to his clumsy actions, of course. His arc would be him learning to be a warrior, but brave, and yeah, he and Knuckles would have a very kind of fun little bond, they would share some laughs, and yeah, honestly, I think that would be a really fun little dynamic to see. Rouge would pretty much be how she is in the games, being flirty, stealing gems, and well, just doing all sorts of stuff. 
really. We would see that she's very determined to get the Master Emerald, as she views it as a very priceless gem of value. But yeah, that's really it for her. As for Omega, he's mostly just the muscle to help Rouge out, and to deal with Knuckles. Also, Omega can absorb energy, so he basically absorbs some of Knuckles' red lightning energy, and that gives him a massive increase in strength, and allows him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Knuckles. So, yeah, just so he doesn't get completely obliterated. So I think that'll be a cool little feature to add into Omega. Finally, there's Mr. Latte, the true main villain of the show. Now, his identity is kind of obvious if you've seen the films, um, especially in his name, but I won't reveal who this character is. Not until the final episode. And as for the other characters, well, I mostly just see them as side characters that Knuckles and Wade would interact with on their misadventures. In fact, mostly because that's kind of what they are. I mean, obviously we've got this character who's related to Wade, which sounds quite interesting. Which, yeah, that that's fine. But anyway, on to... Okay, so this part isn't too long as I've thought of some ideas for episodes, and I've made some plot summaries. Now, I don't know how many episodes there are going to be in the series, but I think maybe around 8 episodes would be good. While Sonic and Tails are away, Knuckles is the protector of Green Hills and the Master Emerald, but that gets put to the test when a thieving bat named Rouge seeks out the Master Emerald while staying with Wade Whipple. Seeing Knuckles in action, a restless Wade wants to learn more about Knuckles, forcing the Echidna to take him in as his apprentice. Mr. Latte gives Rouge a massive helping hand in getting the Master Emerald. Meanwhile, Wade asks for Knuckles' help with a family member's bowling team. Knuckles and Wade journey to a casino to find Rouge and Omega and retrieve the Master Emerald. After barely escaping from Rouge and Omega with the Master Emerald, Knuckles and Wade decide to hide out in an abandoned mansion, but it turns out the place is full of ghosts. When an arts collector obtains the Master Emerald, it's a race to get to London and to see who gets the Emerald first. And finally, arriving at London, Knuckles and Wade fall into a trap set by Rouge, Omega, and Mr. Latte. Can they survive? After Mr. Latte betrays Rouge and Wade gets captured by a controlled Omega, Knuckles and Rouge must put aside their differences and team up to save Wade and stop Mr. Latte. In the final battle, Knuckles and Rouge would help not only save Wade, but would also take down Omega, turning him back to normal and stopping Mr. Latte's plans. However, Mr. Latte decides to ultimately get rid of Knuckles and Rouge once and for all, and uses the Egg Drones and Badniks to bomb the entire museum, ultimately setting fire to it and blowing it up. Knuckles and Wade barely make it out alive, however Rouge ultimately falls down into the fire along with Omega. Two days later, and Sonic and Tails and Tom return from their trip. Sonic asks Knuckles how was his ultimate stay in Green Hills. Knuckles tells him that it was very interesting, and that he's been all over the place on some wild, wacky adventure. To which immediately Wade comes over to show everyone his echidna warrior skills. To which everyone looks a bit confused, but accept it anyway. In the post credit scene, it's revealed that Rouge and Omega are still alive. They're just in hiding. And we would see the two of them bond more in these scenes, which will be good for character growth. And Rouge decides, well, since she's well, injured because her, her leg got broken, she decides to ultimately, well, take a bit of a break and just relax and stay hidden. 
In another post credit scene, it shows Mr. Latte watching a TV report in London by a cameo by Jeff Bauer, who's on the news. The TV report says about how the museum was bombed and how GUN forces does not know any sort of incidents with what's going on. No one was hurt in the fire. But a lot of priceless artifacts were lost. Immediately, Mr. Latte pulls out a watch and begins to send out a message. The bat is dead and the emerald is gone. Immediately, Mr. Latte stops. But then he gets a message back, which says it was nothing but a tool to be used. A useful one, to be precise. But luckily, my next plan in, in, will unfold. And soon, that blasted hedgehog will pay. The world will pay. And the message above on who sent the message is revealed as Dr. Robotnik. So, if that means Dr. Robotnik wanted the emerald, then who's Mr. Latte? Well, it's none other than Agent Stone, who reveals his hood as soon as Robotnik texts him, surrounded by a bunch of badniks. And you can see next to him is his GUN uniform. So he goes to put that on, steps out of his apartment, and meets up with the other GUN people. There we go, guys. So I hope you all enjoyed this little video, uh, my little rewrite. Um, yeah, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel a lot. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, let me know down below your ideas. I would love to hear all of uh, what you guys have to say about them. So I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.